I'm standing here in the engine bay of RC the El Camino. It's been a few days since we've done anything and I wanted to show you the wiring. I think we have it where we need to be. You're looking at the magnificent ProFlow 4 system. The main wiring harness for it starts with the brains. The brain box is located here. I put it on the firewall and I positioned it here for a couple reasons. It'll stay out of the way of the air conditioning system that'll go in eventually. But if you see the harness here, uh, the harness actually goes across here. Then it doubles back through there. And main wiring comes back across the top and goes over here. But we're going to talk a little bit about the other side so far. Right here in the firewall and fender corner of the passenger side, uh, there's a number of wires that come off. Uh, these, I won't really show you where they go other than to tell you that they go way down in the depths of the engine bay there. Uh, this one in particular is for the fuel pump. It's a very long wire, but we're still going to have to lengthen a little bit to make it all the way back to the fuel pump. Uh, good old RC is a very long car. This one is a little bit shorter, and once again, it goes down into the depths of the engine bay. Uh, but this is for the oxygen sensor, which we'll put in the passenger side header. That'll be a future episode. Uh, from there, there's one main wire, which you see right here, which goes all the way down here, kind of around the dark side of the moon, comes back out on the other side of the battery, and this is the power for the ProFlow 4 system right here. We'll have that hook up to the battery. This right here, just for giggles and grins, isn't really part of the system itself, but it is about six foot of wiring that I get to get rid of. Uh, this was what powered the car, and at first it went through the fender well all the way down to the starter, and that's where the power came from when the battery was in the back. In the under the bed there but now we've got the battery up here to power everything I think it'll be a much better idea this way after the main harness doubles back over here you can see where it comes along the very upper edge of the firewall it comes down here to these two main connectors and one of these connectors this one right here I believe yep this one right here runs all of the sensors. The idle control valve here, it runs the manifold pressure uh, sensor here. It runs also the throttle position sensor and coolant temperature, or this, excuse me, this is the fuel pressure and even the coolant temperature. Then on the other harness, right here, the bottom one, uh, is all of the injectors. You can see all the injector connectors here, down the driver's side, and on the passenger side, see all the connectors for that as well. Now there's a couple other wires here that we need to look at. Uh, there's a couple of these very short ones here that come right off of the brain box. I don't know if you can see that or not. Probably not, but those are for the fan. Uh, there's actually three different fans you can run. We might take advantage of two of them. I don't know if we're going to need three. Uh, but those will have to be run to the relays for the fans. Right now our fans are operated on uh, just actually a, a temperature sensor that goes right in the fins of the radiator. Then there's also, last but not least, this is the one of the wires we have to take care of. A black and pink wire which goes all the way across here and that is actually the uh, the wire that enables the whole system and so it needs to go to the ignition switch uh, that is all of this here which ran the old uh, the old ignition system and so we'll be probably getting rid of a bunch of that and tapping into it for what we need this is the end of the fuel pump harness. It's kind of tough to tell, but really we're about on what would be the floorboards or footwell of the back seat 
if this were the station wagon instead of the El Camino. But that means that we have about another six feet to go to get all the way back to the fuel pump back there. And we'll have to see if they have an extension harness for that. If not, they do give us the connectors. We'll just have to make one up and extend the wires back there. Coming out of that same spot in the corner of the passenger side uh, fender well and frame here in the firewall, uh, you see here is the return hose for the fuel. It goes all the way back. We'll be using some of the same mounting points is on the hard line which will be supplying the fuel and then with that you also see this is the cable for the uh, fuel pump and that runs so it'll all run basically in the same spot and forgive for the tight spaces here but if you see that here I just kind of hung it up on the emergency brake cable uh, but that is the fuel uh, fuel pump power and we've got the return line for the fuel and those will all come along with and eventually end up going the same place that the fuel line does and that will then complete our fuel system but the extension's got to go on because the fuel pump lives somewhere over there as I would say in the south fixing to make the fuel pump harness and we've got a little bit of a problem here. This is my wiring kit that I got from Harbor Freight a long time ago. And brown and red would be close enough to the colors of orange and brown. But we have a problem here. The pro These are the choices that we have. We have red and brown which is close enough to the original orange and brown that I think it'd be okay. The problem that we have is the brown on the left here I think is a little bit too big of a gauge to work with the connectors, uh, the pins I should say that we have. The ones on the right, there's a red in the middle and a brown on the right hand side, but those are both the same gauge. Unfortunately I think those are a little too small of a gauge to handle the amperage that the fuel pump needs to have. So we're going to check here a little bit, but I believe that we may have to get some at the auto parts store. So I know this isn't how you measure or determine wire gauge, but because neither the harness nor my cheapo wiring kit are marked, I'm measuring the outside of these wires. So on the harness here, this wire, this is the brown one, so the ground, is about 0 0.085 of an inch. If we take the other wire here, let's back off that, if we take this other wire here, which, uh, and they're both the same size here I found, but there's the brown one that we were going to use otherwise from the harness, and if you look at that, we come out to just about 0 0.90, so technically the wire is a little bit bigger. Hopefully that means that we have at least the same amount of conductors in there. It's a, a stranded wire, but I think we'll be all right. One of the things that can help fine tune the calculations or the table that the ProFlow 4 uses for the mixture or how much fuel it adds to the engine at any given point in time is an intake air temperature sensor or IAT I think they usually refer to them for short and that is one of these and where that goes is in the bottom of the air cleaner that's where I'm going to put it anyway so if you look right here uh, this is a port uh, for some type of crankcase ventilation probably and over here you see this little spot here we can break that out hopefully that is about the size for the grommet that the IAT goes in and we'll see if we can get it in there and that'll be a perfect place for it.
There we are. All right, now for the shoving it in the hole. Just from first glance, this looks to me to be a little bit too small, but we're going to find out. Yep. There has to be just a little bit more meat there left to, for that to go in. Let's see if we can get the next drill bit up. Fortunately or unfortunately, I've got a stepper bit, which is un the biggest bit that I have, or I don't have any regular bits big enough to enlarge this hole. This is what we're going to do it with here. There. There, take some of the burrs off it. All right. That looks like it may be good enough. There it is. Now for the big reveal. Can we get the IAT in there? It's tight, which isn't a bad thing. The question is whether it will go in there or not without becoming a problem. Well, that is quite snug, uh, but I think that that's okay, other than, uh, that's what I call just barely, but it looks like it all clears, if you can see that, sorry. Let's take a look at one last thing here. Here's the air filter. Yeah, it's close, but I think we're good. I think that'll work for that. Now we've got the incoming air temperature sensor fixed there. A big portion of the wiring is done. You can see the brain box mounted there for the, uh, uh, or the control box, excuse me, maybe that's what I should call it, for the uh, ProFlow 4 system. The main connector and harness come off on this side. I've also mounted a number of uh, both ports and uh, solenoids there. You see the one wire that comes off here goes all the way around to the battery. The other two wires here, one of those is for the uh, oxygen sensor, the other one is the harness for the fuel pump. Uh, we have the other main harness coming off here, which has one of those connectors is for the injectors. The other is for this, all of the sensors on the intake manifold itself. The distributor is just sat in place. It's not actually stabbed in where it should be. But I did that so that I could have all the wiring down below. You really can't see it down there, but all the wiring in place. You can see the 
uh, the coil there, the coil wiring hang over the top of it. And then of course, it's a little bit tough to see here, at least on one side you can see it. Uh, there is the injector wiring down there, as well as all the sensors on the back. We even have the intake air temperature sensor here, although I will say that this is on Edelbrock. Uh, it's a 10 inch air filter, which I wasn't paying attention. This is the air filter I wanted, except that I wanted it in the 14 inch instead of the 10 inch. So that's coming in. You see a whole mess of wiring here. Let me set this light here. You see a whole mess of wiring here. This is all stuff coming from the car. A lot of it is going to be taken off. We just need the uh, particular wires to the starter, to the uh, power to the car, those kinds of things. And we don't need all the rest of it. 